Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now, in today's video, I am coming at you with part 8 of the Aquarium Reaction Series. So, basically, if you haven't seen part 1 through 7 in this series, I find a whole bunch of horrible aquariums. I'm going to go ahead and show them to you guys, as well as react to them, and give my little tips and criticisms on each aquarium. But trust me, the ones I've selected for us today are pretty, pretty bad. Without further ado, though, we're going to jump into the very... The very first picture, let me just get it pulled up here, and let's get started. So this first one is a goldfish aquarium. It looks to be like a standard 125 gallon aquarium. Um, it's actually supposed to be a reef tank or an aquarium with a sump. As you can see, there's some overflow boxes in this aquarium. However, it's only filled up like a third of the way with water. Disgusting water, that is. No substrate, no decor, one small canister filter, and like... 30 to 40 goldfish. First of all, there's so many easy, easy solutions to making this tank a thousand times better. Um, let's fill the tank all the way up to the top. Let's get an adequate filtration system. Um, it'd be nice to maybe get this tank off the floor. I don't know why it's on the floor. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of work to be done here. Uh, these poor goldfish are stuck in this nasty water. There's way too many of them. It's totally overcrowded. Um, ideally these goldfish would be moved to like a koi pond or something because this like 50 gallons of water if that is not even close to enough. This next aquarium has me questioning everything. Um, we have a mix of freshwater and saltwater fish being kept in the same aquarium. Now in the back we have some discus. Discus are pretty large freshwater fish and then spread out through the rest of the tank we have some saltwater fish like fox face, um, a sailfin tang, a tomato clown, some damsels. Um, yeah, if you don't see what's wrong with that, freshwater fish should not cohabitate with saltwater fish. Um, I guess the specific gravity, which is the amount of salt in the water of this tank, is 1.006. Uh, for reference, in my actual saltwater tank, my salinity is 1.025. So, the idea here is that the water is just salty enough to keep saltwater fish alive but just freshwater-ish enough to keep freshwater fish alive. But there's really no happy medium here. I mean, that's not how this really works. Um, we can see the fox face in the front is so stressed. The colors are super, super pale. If you look back there, I don't know where he is, but you can see my fox face fish, who is a bright, vibrant yellow. Um, that's what these fish look like when they're not stressed out. A lot of these fish look kind of just sticking to themselves. The discus are kind of sitting on the back of the aquarium. I don't know whose idea this was or why this was a good idea. Like, what's the reason? Like, you have two fish tanks. You don't need all the fish in one. Anyways, next tank. So a common theme among these tanks seems to be them not being filled up all the way. This is a pretty large aquarium and there's a couple turtles in it, it looks like. But the issue here is the water volume. These turtles need room to swim, they need room to move, and in this small aquarium, that's not possible. However, if they were to fill this aquarium up to the very top, fill it all the way up with water, that would probably double or triple the swimming space for these turtles. They can move their basking dock to the top of the aquarium, and that's how they can stay in the same footprint, but give their turtles a suitable habitat. There's also some fish in there. They would also benefit from having more water. This tank looks gross, it looks old, it looks run down. The lights like hanging in the aquarium is a little concerning if they fall into the water and that's not good. Electricity and water don't mix. But yeah, let's just work on filling up this aquarium, giving all the animals room to swim, and everyone would be a lot happier than in this, like, four inches of water down at the bottom. As if it couldn't get worse from the last aquarium, this poor turtle isn't even living in an aquarium. He's living in a plastic box. You know it's bad when the size of the fish food container is just about the same size as the habitat for the animal. This turtle needs around a minimum of a 40 to 50 gallon aquarium with heat lamps, filters, heaters, not a box. Um, horrible excuse for a turtle aquarium. Plain animal abuse, plain neglect right here. Absolutely horrible. It could not actually get worse than this, to be honest with you. For some reason, also going to be quite popular today, is the mixing the freshwater fish with saltwater fish. I don't really have too much context behind this tank. But as we can see, there's a fish that looks to be way too large for the tank, actually sticking up a little bit out of water. I believe that is a saltwater fish. But if we zoom in, there's a baby sailfin tang, which I know 100% is a saltwater fish. And then up in the front, we have what looks like a freshwater bass, I believe. I don't know too many large exotic freshwater fish. However, 
That's definitely a freshwater fish and a tank with a saltwater fish. Like this has gone further than just mixing, you know, aggressive tropical fish with peaceful tropical fish. No, this is too... What? You, okay. If anyone at home is trying this, which I know you guys are better than this, um, freshwater fish, no matter how hard you try, 99.99% .99 of the time cannot be kept with saltwater fish. There is exceptions to that rule like mollies, but we're not going to get into that today. Just a general overall rule, don't mix your fish if they're from two different bodies of water. This next aquarium right here looks to be like a standard 10 gallon aquarium. It's a little foggy, it's a little murky, nothing a water change couldn't handle. But if we look at the decor a little bit more, um, there's a paper towel tube or a toilet paper tube, like the roll thingy in the inside, like the piece of cardboard is inside of this aquarium as a decor piece for the fish. Um, maybe that's contributing to the dirty water is the cardboard dissolving into it. Um, I'm not quite sure what the thought process was with this, to be honest, but if you didn't know, cardboard breaks down in water, and I would not recommend putting cardboard in your fish tank um, at all. I'm not quite sure why this is happening. I wish I had more backstory to this one too, to be honest, but regardless, don't do that. And last but not least, <laughs> for today's worst aquariums I could find, this is a saltwater tank that someone is selling for $700. Now, to be honest, the tank looks pretty clean. It looks really nice, but in reality, the tank capacity is only 40 to 50 gallons, and these fish in here need way bigger than a 40 to 50 gallon tank. We have a Niger trigger, we have a huge clownfish, we have a blue tang, we have a powder brown tang, and a huma huma trigger fish. As well as a snowflake eel and some other little bloody guy down there. Uh, these fish need like upwards of 150 gallon tanks. These are predator fish, at least the two triggers are. And the blue tang on its own needs a larger aquarium as well. So while this is a pretty nice little saltwater setup, it is not nearly worth $700, being that there's just a heater and a hang on back filter. But these fish are going to need to be upgraded into a much larger home. These little Facebook marketplace or offer up little aquariums are always interesting to me because it's kind of intriguing to see what other people or the conditions other people keep their tanks in. And unfortunately, this is one of the worst of them, if that makes sense. <laughs> but that is going to be a wrap for today's video. If you like these reaction videos, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you guys like this video, I will go ahead and start making a part nine to this series. But thank you guys so much for watching once again and good bye.